often shown sitting or standing next to the Swedish ivy plant in the Oval Office. Imagine the stories this pet would tell if it could speak, the conversations, the deals, even the scandals that were played out in its presence. Everything from Watergate to Monica Lewinsky. In Luke's account of Palm Sunday, the Pharisees tell Jesus to stop his followers from shouting. Jesus says, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. If the stones that were lying on the road to ancient Jerusalem had shouted out, what would they have said? Let's ask one of them right now. Excuse me, but I have never addressed a stone before. I have never interviewed a stone before. How should I address you? Like you would a rock star. I see. Well, how long have you been sitting on this road to ancient Jerusalem? Longer than you can imagine. You human beings measure lives in decades. We measure ours in geological ages. To us, something 6,000 years old is contemporary. What have you seen in all those years? I've seen the rise and fall of kings. I have heard the shouts and cheers of crowds. I have felt the hooves of horses, the tramp of armies, the wheels of chariots, the shuffle of pilgrims, and the tapping canes of blind beggars. Who are some of the most interesting people that you have met? I go all the way back to Abraham. I was here when Melchizedek the king of Salem, which is short for Jerusalem, received a tithe for a tenth of Abraham's possessions as an offering. I was here when Joshua tried to capture Jerusalem and failed. I was here when David infiltrated the city by sending his troops to the warship. On my road, David brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. By my road, Solomon brought the cedars of Lebanon for the temple. On my road came the Queen of Sheba and the armies of Assyria, and the siege works of the Babylonians. By my road, the people of Israel were led into exile at the time of Jeremiah, and brought back at the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. So, you have seen a lot of history. I have seen pharaohs of Egypt, kings of Greece, emperors of Rome, Turkish sultans, medieval crusaders, British soldiers, and Israeli commandos. Every kind of king and conqueror imaginable has traveled down my road, but none like the one I saw that Sunday afternoon before Passover. Really? Tell us about him. They said his name was Jesus. He was part of a group of pilgrims coming from Galilee to Jerusalem for the Passover. I could tell they were Galileans by their accent. In many ways, they were just like any other group coming to the temple for worship. Normally, as people approach the temple, they recite the words of Psalm 118, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Then they form possession, sometimes even waving branches as they make their way up to the altar to offer a sacrifice. What was different about this group? The Galileans did something strange. They not only waved palm branches, they spread out their coats on the road as if rolling out a carpet for a king. Personally, I have never understood why people thought they had to cover up perfectly beautiful stones before a king could pass over them. I think we are quite attractive. <laughs> is that all they did? They also cheered for him as if he were a king. It is traditional for people coming to Jerusalem to say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. But these people said, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. I have seen plenty of kings in my time, but never one like this. What was different about him? He was riding a donkey. Personally, I hate donkeys. <laughs> Not just because of their sharp hooves, but because of the other things that donkeys do on roads. <laughs> I understand, but what was so unusual about seeing a donkey in ancient Jerusalem? 
Donkeys are pack animals. No king rides into a city on a donkey. I have seen Roman governors charging <coughs> on horses and Egyptian commanders riding on chariots. I have even seen King Herod riding on a golden chair carried by his servants. But no great ruler ever comes to the city on a young donkey. The riders' feet were barely off the ground. So what did your leaders think about this? Oh, they were terrified. Not of the guy on the donkey, but of the Romans. They told Jesus to make his followers quit calling the king. What were they afraid of? The Romans don't take too kindly to anyone claiming to be a king. And they tend to overreact. If some Jew claims to be a king, they arrest everyone who might be remotely associated with them and put them on a cross. I've got bloodstains from countless people that Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, has marched down my road to be crucified. So your leaders were afraid that if Pilate heard the crowd calling Jesus a king, they might start gathering people up and killing them? Exactly. They were almost desperate to make Jesus quiet the crowd. But Jesus said that if the crowd were silent, the stones would shout out. That must have made you feel good. It did, actually. We stones are not afraid of Roman governors. But if he really is a king, why did he ride on a donkey? I could not understand that myself until I heard people discussing a verse from the prophet Zechariah. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So that explains the donkey. There is more. It says, He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nations. What does that mean? Normally, a king brings peace by amassing armies and weapons and wiping out his enemies. But this king will bring peace by getting rid of weapons and armies. Not that I object, you understand. A few less chariot wheels would be a good thing for us, Rhodes. You're a pothead. And as for war horses, they have the same problem as donkeys. A king who brings peace without weapons or armies, how can that work? I don't know, but the alternative doesn't work either. I've seen almost every army in the Mediterranean come down this road. Egyptians, Assyrians, Babylonians, <coughs> Persians, Greeks, Romans. Since the time of David, the walls of this city have been torn down four times. The temple has been destroyed three times. Twice, the people have been forced out of their homes into exile by a foreign conqueror. There have been plenty of chariots and war horses on this road, but not much peace. So, what happened to the man on the donkey? When he arrived in front of the temple, he slid off his donkey and began to weep. His tears were hot and salty. He said, If you, even you, and only recognize this day the things that make for peace. But now, they are hidden from your eyes. It sounds like he was not expecting to succeed. It was worse than that. He said that enemies would overrun the city of Jerusalem. He said, they will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another. That's when it started to get personal. I can imagine. He said this would happen because the people of Jerusalem did not recognize the time of their visitation. What did he mean by that? I'm not really sure. Maybe he was saying they would have had a chance if they'd only believed in him. I thought you said they did believe in him. They called him a king. Yes, but he wasn't the kind of king they were looking for. Riding in on a donkey was only the beginning. He never picked up a sword. He never organized an army. He never launched an assault against the Romans. That donkey was as close to a war horse as he ever got. What happened to this king? He didn't fare so well. Five days later, 
There was another procession of people along my road, this time coming out of the city. In the middle of it was Jesus. This time he was on foot, carrying a cross. The only crown he wore was a crown of thorns. The crowds weren't cheering him, they were jeering him. They said, if you are a king, why don't you save yourself? Didn't his followers try to protect him? He told them not to. I heard that when he was arrested, a couple of them pulled out swords, but he made them put their weapons away. You mean that he intentionally let the soldiers take him away? That's how it appears. It was as if he expected it, as if it had to be that way. Why? It was for him the way of peace. The way of peace? Yeah, I know that sounds strange. Most of the kings who passed down my road claimed to bring peace, but they did it, or tried to do it, by creating a single world empire that would end fighting between nations. Pax Romana, the Romans called it, but their unity was the unity of dictatorship, and their peace was established with a sword. It never lasted very long. Eventually, the resentments, hatred, and desire for freedom of the conquered peoples tore those empires apart. There has to be another way. You think that peace on earth can be brought by a king on a donkey who was executed on a cross? If peace cannot be brought with a sword, perhaps it must be bought with a sacrifice. But how can he be a king if his people, if he was rejected by his own people? There is another passage in that psalm that I told you about earlier. Psalm 118, verses 22 and 23. It is my favorite passage in the Bible. What does it say? The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Isn't that a great passage? I can see why you like it. Sometimes, the true value of the thing is not always apparent at first glance. When the crowd of his followers led Jesus into the city, they shouted, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Maybe they were right, but in a way they did not yet understand. Do you understand it? I don't know. But maybe his death is not the last word. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. If it might happen with rocks, maybe it can also happen with people. Do you have anything else that you would like to share? Since I met him, I have a new favorite song. Want to guess what it is? Rock of Ages? <laughs> nice product, but no. It's My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Why is that? It's because of the chorus. <laughs>